The country of Russia, if you think about it, is pretty famous worldwide for its public transport. Just take the Moscow Metro, for example. It's basically a must-see for everybody that visits Russia. It's like a museum. People go on guided tours there. It's a really big deal. And it is one of the biggest and one of the best metro systems in the entire world. And yes, that is pretty cool. The Moscow Metro, the St. Petersburg Metro, some metros in some other cities are pretty good. Uh, that is if you're lucky enough to get them, of course. I mean, my city of Chelyabinsk, for example, has been meant to have a metro for uh, about 40 years now. And... Uh, uh, still nothing, still, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> So yeah, Russia does have some drip regarding public transport, but I'm here today not to talk about that. Today, I'm here to talk about uh, something that annoyed me very much, something that I had to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis for years and still do, the absolute worst side of public transport of Russia that basically makes this country look like a third world country, pretty much. Hello Blazers, it is your boy Roman, your favorite neighborhood Russian, and in today's video guys, we're gonna be talking about the absolute worst of Russian public transport, the thing that emerged from the ugly depths of the fiery hell, Marshrutka. So, what is a marshrutka? In Russian, a marshrutka is short for marshrutnaya taxi, which basically means route taxi. It's usually a kind of minivan or a mini bus that rides around a circle. It's basically a mini bus, that's what it is. It circles a particular route, it collects passengers, it basically is just a bus, but smaller and there's more of them. Sounds fun? Well, trust me guys, it's not, and I'm gonna explain why on my personal experience. Marshrutka, these mini buses, these are usually types of public transport that are not usually registered as public transport, and they rent by uh, private companies. And essentially these companies have zero regulations on who they hire, so undocumented immigrants, people with no licenses, people that are not checked for any like eligibility to be a driver. There's been a lot of cases when drunk drivers were driving these. And of course guys, as you understand logically, this leads to a ton of car accidents. Dude, like every single person I know has gotten in an accident in one of these things. I did as well. Thankfully it wasn't anything bad though, but it happens, and sometimes it's really bad. You see guys, one of the big issues with these minibuses is that usually the driver has to basically do all the economic work. What I mean is that there's no terminal to pay in this minibus, in this minivan, and there's also no person that whose job it is to like sell tickets and get your money or whatever. So usually the driver is driving the car, he's also getting money from the back somewhere, he's like counting money and giving a change back. He's also usually on the phone with somebody, texting somebody, uh, watching uh, some kind of TV series on his phone, and also screaming at the driver next to him because he overtook him. That's, that's, that's what's going on. Oh and yeah, they also probably usually play the most loud and obnoxious music ever because they have zero regard for uh, the people that they're taking somewhere. So that was the first thing. The second thing is that there's so many things to combine is that I don't even know how to describe it. It's just awful. They're extremely cramped. They're extremely dirty. They're so uncomfortable. And sometimes you can't see and you don't know where the fuck you are. I want you guys to just imagine the situation. Uh, so a marshrutka, a minibus, is a type of car that maybe holds about like uh, 10 people at most. You know, there's like 10 seats in there or something like that. The issue is that is when you commute in somewhere to like work or study during rush hour, right? The amount of people that want to commute is just insane. And basically what happens is that in order to take as much passengers as possible, what they do is that even when all of the seats are taken, they keep stopping at every single stop and more and more people come in to the point where there's like 50 people in one of these things. It's extremely cramped. People are like touching every everybody in every single spot possible. If you're sitting down, you're going to be sniffing up someone's junk or asshole. <laughs> if you're standing in one of these, your junk is going to be in someone's face, there's no escaping it. To that fact, let's also add the fact that these are usually extremely dirty, especially in winter or fall when Russia, you know, is just covered in slush and dirt. People come in and come out, the floor is disgusting, okay? You like, you can't put your bag on the floor or anything because it's gonna be covered in shit. So yeah, if you have a backpack or a bag or anything in one of these things, good luck, dude. You're gonna, you're gonna suffer and everybody's gonna hate you, by the way, and be like, yo, get your bag out of here, dude. I can't do anything! Next thing is, they're extremely uncomfortable, so, uh, you know, guys for me as a six foot four guy it's very hard for me it's for any public transport to satisfy my needs i guess but the thing is that these minibuses route taxis are even worse essentially as i've said there's like usually 10 seats in these and a lot of the times the drivers like um modify their cars they modify their interiors and what they do is that they insert even more seats but the space is still the same so basically what happens is that you have seats that are like literally like this close next to each other and essentially you can't fit in you have like the 
this much space for your legs, okay? The next seat is literally like right here. So essentially you have to sit sideways. Your feet are in the like the corridor where people are moving. Everybody's stumbling. Everybody's falling over your feet. It's f and everybody hates you as well. Looking at you like you're a fucking piece of shit. I can't do anything. My legs are long. What can I fucking do about it? Be mad at the fucking retard who modified this fucking minibus to have the seat so crammed that I can sit properly. Jesus Christ. The other thing I want to mention is uh, you can see shit. So what I'm saying is that basically the drivers of these things, they don't care. They don't care about your safety. They don't care about your comfort. They don't care. They drive like assholes. I've never been in one of these root taxis where the driver wasn't like shifting like a retard where the entire thing just shakes and they, they didn't smash into like curbs on the roads so on such high speeds that everybody flies up in the air and your ass is sore by the time you arrive home because you've been driving for an hour. Like I said, it's extremely dirty and they don't really care about anything. So what happens is usually is that once again, this is the worst in the winter. The worst time to ride one of these is the winter, which, you know, I had to do. Russia, you know, it gets very cold here. Minus 20, minus 30 degrees Celsius. And me, for example, I had to commute to my university and the commute would be from 40 minutes to an hour every single day and uh, also the same time to go back. So essentially what happens is that because it's so cold outside and because it's warm inside, the windows of these root taxis get covered with sheets of ice straight up sometimes the ice actually forms on the inside as well it's actually usually extremely cold in these things as well i'm gonna get to that but usually you could like take your hand and put it up to the window and the ice actually melts so like you're freezing your hand but you're melting the ice so you can see outside the window but the worst thing is usually what happens is that the ice forms outside of the window so on the exterior of the car and what happens is that essentially you just uh you're commuting and you can't look out the window and you don't know what the fuck you are <laughs> It's fucking ridiculous. Essentially, yeah, you have to use like Google Maps or whatever to check out your location to know where the fuck you need to get out. The issue is that once again, usually these things are extremely cramped, okay? And you don't even have the room to like put your phone out of your pocket or something. It's it's impossible. So usually you're literally stuck there and you don't know where you are for like minutes, for like tens of minutes on end. You don't know where the fuck you are. It's ridiculous. Now, yeah, let's talk about the coldness. Uh, this is also one of the worst things. And uh, when I remember this, Jesus Christ, man, Oh my god, I hated it. So like I said, uh, my commute to my university was like 40 to a minute to an hour. And the winters in Russia get really cold. So sometimes I would have like the weather that would reach minus 30 Celsius. So as you guys know, in any decent kind of public transport, they have some kind of heat in inside, right? Well, in these root taxis, they don't have shit. What these cars are, it's literally like a metal fucking frame with seats installed in it. And that's it. No sound fucking proofing, no heat proofing, nothing. Like the interiors of these root taxis look like these are cars that were just like like assembled only halfway and so you know whatever that's fine but this becomes kind of a problem when it's minus 30 celsius outside and you sit in there inside 40 minutes to an hour essentially the weather inside one of these things it's the same as it is outside. It may be a little bit less harsh because there's no wind that gets in. That is, of course, if, like, they don't have any holes in their car because that happens as well. And sometimes there's wind that's blowing to your side or something for an hour and then you come back and, oh my god. Ah! This is fucking third world country shit. How, how is, how are people okay with this? So I'm saying, one of these things is usually basically just as cold as, uh, as it is outside. So you sit in there, essentially, in minus 30 Celsius degree weather. Uh, for an hour while you're committing to university. Dude, the fingers on my toes went numb because it was so cold and I was actually freezing in there. I was sitting there, you know, like, you know, curved up in the ball for an hour trying to not freeze myself because I wouldn't, I knew it was going to be cold. I had like five layers of clothing on, I was fine, whatever, but you can't really do anything. You can't do much with your toes. So my toes, my, the fingers on my toes would literally go numb. They would freeze to like death. It's crazy, and just like I mentioned before, by the way, you know, I told you about the trick of putting up your hands to the window to melt the ice to be able to see out the window to know where the fuck you are. You know, when it's minus 30 Celsius degrees outside, you have, like, leather gl gloves on or something. Your hands are extremely cold still, you know, it's very hard to keep your hands uh, warm. And it's really annoying when uh, your hands are already cold as shit, basically freezing, going numb, and you also have to put them up to the window, to the ice, to also, like, melt it to see what's going on outside, because the ice comes back. You know what I mean? Because it's so cold in these things. It's fucking insane, dude. And I guess the last thing I want to touch upon is because these things are extremely illegal. There's a ton of them. But what happens is that because there's so much of these root taxis, essentially the city government...
governments feel like they don't have to uh, provide any money to create new bus routes to provide more buses. The reason why I had to take one of these route taxis is because from where I live, there was not a single bus route that went directly to my university. And essentially, this is what happens. The actual public transport, buses and trams, etc. They're extremely underfunded. There's not enough of them. And what happens is that these dog shit ass route taxis replace the actual public transport because people have no choice and people don't have money to take like a cab every single day. It's pretty expensive. It adds up. And essentially, these route taxis are just cancer on the body of every single Russian city. They're a plague that's destroying our, the cities and destroying the public transport in every single city dude like I just remember this shit now waking up at 6 a.m. I like it's like minus 30 degrees Celsius outside coming out here standing in there waiting for like 20 minutes because there's like it's rush hour in the morning there's not enough of them as well then getting in it's extremely cramped you have to stand all, all the way there basically and it's very it's very hard for me as like again guys I'm six foot four and there's minivans and once again they're also short that's the problem too a bus is pretty tall these minivans are short and than me so essentially if i'm standing in one i have to be bent over like that for the entire fucking trip and then like my neck is aching my back is aching it's just awful the driver's driving like a fucking maniac stopping like everybody's flying every single time he stops and every time every single time he fucking accelerates because you're flying all over the place you're like you're bumping someone with your ass your junk is in someone's face you're trying really hard to not put your nutsack in somebody's face but it happens anyway because the driver's a fucking dickhead you have your back to your side or whatever people are like get your bag away you fucking dickhead i can't do anything i can't do anything we're just the poor working class put in this fucking cramped piece of shit and made to fight against each other to not understand the problems of the world you know what i mean then it's cold as fuck as well i'm standing uh, it's fucking cramped my nutsack is in someone's face somebody's fucking cursing me out there's loud ass music playing there's fucking like cash drop it on the floor the floor is extremely dirty the fucking <laughs> <laughs> fucking because the minibus is so cramped there's not even any place in the corridor for people to walk out and, and exit at their stop so people have to like exit out of the uh minibus and then uh, to just let people get out and then come back and it's all this fucking cramped fuck oh my god and then the fucking route taxi driver stops at some spot where there's nothing you know instead of stopping at an actual bus stop sometimes these motherfuckers would stop at like in the middle of a fucking field like you know there's like slush and snow they like open the door and there's literally like a fucking uh three meter deep puddle in there yeah dude just go ahead fucking jump in you know what i mean <laughs> You finally arrive, you fucking fight your way through bodies, you know, it's like, it's like being in the fucking mass grave or something. That's what it feels like. You fight through bodies to fucking get out at your stop. You get out, you open the door, which, the door's actually usually not automatic as well, so you have to, like, use force, and they usually get stuck, and they get fucking, like, iced, and you have to fucking... FUCKING JESUS CHRIST! You open the door, there's like duck shit on the floor in a 5 five meter wide, 3 meter pu pu deep puddle. You just step in and you're like, yeah, I finally arrived to my university. It's time to have a fucking jolly day studying, dude! Oh my god, man, this shit... It, it gives me back flashbacks and I know there's gonna be some fucking dumbasses again in the comments of this video like Oh, dude sounds fine sounds fun No, it's not fucking fun when you do it four years in a row every single day where you fucking you feel like you feel awful It feels horrible. It feels horrible not only for your mental health But just for your body just being in one of these things your fucking entire body aches you freeze to death It's fucking ridiculous. There is nothing cool about this shit. There is nothing. It's awful I don't understand how the fuck this has become a norm in this country it's like third world country shit i want to say though thanks to the support of my patrons to you guys watching my channel i've been actually finally been able to start using taxis more often so not every day obviously i wouldn't drive uh, in a cab every day to university but sometimes i would especially when i'm very tired after the uni i would come back home in a cab it's just really nice and refreshing to be alone in a vehicle and uh, be free and uh, be comfortable not have fucking gopniks drinking beer next to you okay and not having somebody's ass or junk up your face the entire time and not freezing to death is pretty refreshing i'm not gonna lie so thank you guys for that yeah guys i don't know this is a very long video but there's really no quick way to express what i'm feeling about this it's ridiculous uh marshrutka is uh, fucking is is hell it's hell shit dude it's been created by the devil i fucking hate it and uh i long for the day these things are eradicated from our streets and are replaced by normal fucking buses because that's what we need this this ain't it, Chief. This is not it, Chief.
at all. So yeah, guys, I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this video. A lot of raw emotion in this one. I hope you guys did like it. If you guys did, please make sure to slap the like button in this video. As well, guys, if you want to support my channel, make sure to go over to the link down in the description to my Patreon link. Donate to it. I would gladly appreciate it. You guys can also buy my YouTube. The link is also down in the description. That also helps out my channel and stuff. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>